Nested morphology of gas streams confirms a mechanism that helps infant stars to grow by ingesting this material. Planet forming discs, maelstroms of gas and dust swirling around young stars are nurseries that give rise to planetary systems, including our solar system. Astronomers have discovered new details of gas flows that sculpt and shape those discs over time. The observed nested structure of those flows confirms a long theorized mechanism that allows the star to grow by tapping disc material. Every second, over 3,000 stars emerge across the visible universe. Many of these nascent stars are surrounded by what astronomers call a protoplanetary disk, a swirling, pancake-like expanse of hot gas and dust that nourishes the growth of the central star and lays the foundation for new planets. Yet, the precise mechanisms that spawn stars and planetary systems remain largely mysterious. A team of astronomers led by University of Arizona researchers supported by scientists from the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy Empire in Heidelberg, Germany, used the James Webb Space Telescope JWST to obtain some of the most detailed insights into the forces that shape protoplanetary disks. The observations offer glimpses into what our solar system may have looked like 4.6 billion years ago. Specifically, the team was able to trace so-called disk winds in unprecedented detail. These winds are streams of gas flowing from the planet forming disk out into space. Primarily powered by magnetic fields, these winds can travel dozens of kilometers in just one second. The researchers' findings, recently published in Nature Astronomy, help astronomers better understand how young planetary systems form and evolve. According to scientists, one of the most important processes at work in a protoplanetary disk is the star-eating matter from its surrounding disk, which astronomers call accretion. The specific ways in which this happens have not been understood, but they think that winds driven by magnetic fields across most of the disk surface could play a very important role. Young stars grow by pulling in gas from the disk swirling around them. But for that to happen, the gas must first shed some of its inertia. Otherwise, the gas would consistently orbit the star and never fall onto it. Astrophysicists call this process losing angular momentum. But how exactly that happens has proved elusive. To better understand how angular momentum works in a protoplanetary disk, it helps to picture a figure skater on the ice. Tucking her arms alongside her body will make her spin faster, while stretching them out will slow down her rotation. Because her mass does not change, the angular momentum remains the same. For accretion to occur, gas across the disk has to lose angular momentum. Still, astrophysicists have a hard time agreeing on how exactly this happens. In recent years, magnetically driven disk winds have emerged as essential players funneling away some gas from the disk surface with it, angular momentum allowing the leftover gas to move inward and ultimately fall onto the star. Because other processes at work also shape protoplanetary disks, it is critical to be able to distinguish between the different phenomena. While the star's magnetic field pushes out material at the inner edge of the disk, in what astronomers call an X-wind, the outer parts of the disk are eroded by intense starlight, resulting in so-called thermal winds, which blow at much slower velocities. JWST's high sensitivity and resolution were ideally suited to distinguish between the magnetic field-driven wind, the thermal wind, and the X-wind. A crucial property distinguishing the magnetically driven from the X-wind is that they are located farther out and extend across broader regions, including the inner, rocky planets of our solar system, roughly between Earth and Mars. These winds also extend farther above the disk than thermal winds, reaching hundreds of times the distance between Earth and the Sun. In particular, the nested structure of the various wind components, a hallmark of those disk winds, was beyond the observation's capabilities. In contrast, the new JWST observations revealed that structure without any doubt. The observed morphology matches the expectations for a magnetically driven disk wind. These observations strongly suggest that we have obtained the first detailed images of the winds that can remove angular momentum 
and solve the long-standing problem of how stars and planetary systems form. For their study, the researchers selected four protoplanetary disk systems, all appearing edge-on when viewed from Earth. Their orientation allowed the dust and gas in the disk to act as a mass, blocking some of the bright central star's light, which otherwise would have overwhelmed the winds. Scientists hopes to expand these observations to more protoplanetary disks to understand better how common the observed disk wind structures are in the universe and how they evolve. Researchers believe they could be common, but with four objects, it's a bit difficult to say. They want to get a larger sample with JWST and then also see if we can detect changes in these winds as stars assemble and planets form. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed our videos, subscribe to our channel for there's more to come.